uh, good to be back from the holidays. Got everybody back. Guys had the chance, obviously, mentally, physically to get refreshed. Be the last time they get uh, three-plus days in a row off until the spring. So I think they really relish that and enjoy that. And from what I can gather from talking to all of them, they really uh, had a great uh, time at home seeing family and friends. Came back. We've had three days now uh, to prepare uh, for the Michigan game tomorrow at 2 o'clock. And, um, you know, obviously we have great respect uh, for them. Um, I'm really um, always been impressed with their offense for years, uh, dating back to when we played them at Ohio. But, you know, in, in my opinion, uh, watching them, it may be as good a shooting team um, as, as they've put on the floor. Uh, they shoot the three at, uh, at four positions, have multiple guys that make shots, both uh, that start for them and come off the bench. Um, they're in a real – uh, synchronization right now on offense as you watch them you can see they've continued to get better throughout their 13 games certainly be a challenge at that end of the floor for sure and and um, you know obviously they've won I believe it's eight of nine so they're playing good basketball um, you know for us I thought you know coming off of uh, the Missouri game the thing that stood out to me the most was uh, our defensive efficiency and our man which has really improved a great deal. I think our younger guys are getting better. They certainly haven't arrived yet at that end, but they're starting to understand concepts a little bit more. They'll really be challenged tomorrow at 2 o'clock uh, for sure. Um, you know, they, they're very good at picking on guys, and, and uh, tomorrow our guys got to be on certainly on their P's and Q's and, uh, and ready to go. So uh, I know DB also handed out our, you know, official announcement of uh, Kipper Nichols, who – uh, joined us and came in town yesterday's practice yesterday and today and uh, boy we glad to have him now and have our entire team he's you know really a, a great student great person and offers just a lot of versatility as a player with his size his strength um, his body I mean he's got a you know man's body at 18 19 years old he's very versatile he plays um uh, versatile both offensively and defensively. He can guard multiple positions defensively. He can play multiple positions offensively. Oh, the guys like that, they're, they're always offer just a tremendous uh, value to your team. But the thing that's impressed me the last two days is just how well he's fit in. He's just a, I knew he was a great kid, but uh, I, I think he fits right in line with the character that we have in our locker room and with our team this year. And um, I know he's awful excited to be here, so we're awful glad to welcome him. Questions? Um, I've had mid-year guys. I've had mid-year guys that have been eligible right away. Obviously, he's not eligible this semester. Uh, but, you know, I, I think the biggest thing for him is, you know, his ability, obviously, as a freshman to fit in, but our guy's ability as well to connect with him and uh, make him feel welcome. It's a two-way street. I'm confident our guys are going to do that. We had a great visit when he came on his official visit. You know, I think uh, certainly our players, our staff, felt a real connection to him. I think, obviously, the feeling was mutual. And it's a big reason why he's here is because of the people. So, you know, we're, we're excited to have him. And, you know, obviously he doesn't know, as he and I were talking after practice today quickly, you know, every set play that we run or terminology. He doesn't have that down yet. But who would? He's been here for two days. But uh, he's a quick learner. And you could tell that from he was on the scout team the last couple of days in preparation for Michigan. He picked stuff up quick and has a great heart, great mind. And, uh, you know, I know he's excited to get here and get to work. Malcolm, you know, the first thing he said about Kepper was, you know, Jimmy Butler 2.0. I mean, does he have that kind of maybe offensive, defensive combo skill set? Well, he's versatile at both ends of the floor for sure. You know, he's a guy who can score, pass, dribble, defend, has good hands. He can think. He comes from a winning program, um, played for uh, great high school and AAU programs. Uh, his high school coach is a, a guy I've known for a long time, very well respected, great coach. Uh, won a state championship. He knows what winning looks like. Um, just has really good feel for the game. Can really think the game, and uh, is versatile. And he's a winner on and off the court. So, for us, as we as I've t said to you guys, as I continue to do this more and more and get older, those things become even more and more valuable to me. Um, the fit piece, and he is just a great fit. What experience do you have with the mumps? <laughs> Not very much. You know, I don't. You know, I, I, I don't personally have any, thank goodness. You know, all my, you know, I've, I've, I've taken all my vaccinations. To, so I'm good there. Have you got a, a player with mumps that, uh... 
We have a player who has an illness uh, and obviously recovering uh, from that. And, you know, I, I'm not an expert, certainly, with all that stuff. That's Schmitty in the doctor's area of expertise. But, but um, you know, we'll see how that goes. Obviously, he's day to day at this point. It's a great question. Um, yes and no. Yes from the standpoint of you think of a, a team like Iowa State who plays small, very well respected nationally on the offensive end, multiple shooters, ball handlers, um, set a lot of pick and rolls, very, very difficult to defend. So we got you know, to see that firsthand. I think Michigan has some of those um, characteristics. But at the same time, their offense is also different uh, than uh, Iowa State's. Uh, but do they play, uh, you know, what some people would call small ball or four guard lineup, very similar to Iowa State? Yes, I think what makes Iowa State unique, obviously, is Niang. You know, he's a, they can play him at four and five, um, which makes him very difficult to defend. But you know, we played obviously we've played really good teams, really good point guards, really good offenses. You know, I think I've been very firm with stating very accurately that it's by far the best non-conference schedule we've played in my four years, top to bottom. When you look at the cumulative of all 13 games and who we played, the styles we played, and where we played them, and, you know, not getting home till December, and, you know, it's challenging. And our hope is that it's prepared in particular our young guys who have played a little bit more due to some injuries, maybe a little bit faster than would have happened otherwise. Duncan Robinson his three-point number just jump off the page. It's yeah. Unbelievable. You have to do a double take. Yeah. Uh, who is this kid? What, what, what well, he's this? a Division three transfer. You know, certainly give them credit. Um, you know, I don't know the ins and outs of his recruitment. Obviously, they would. But, you know, what I do know is that he's a really good player. He's got great size. He has a quick release. And, obviously, you look at those numbers, uh, what Tup's talking about, it's a 60% three-point shooting on 79 attempts through 13 games. I mean, I can't recall ever seeing that on that many attempts, 13 games into a season, that percentage that high from three. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Um, and they have a lot of guys that can shoot the ball well, as we know, uh, but that's an exceptional, you know, almost unheard of percentage. Michigan, you know, with Karis Levert and Derek Walton and then without those two guys. I mean, sure. They're both healthy now. What kind of difference does, do they make? Well, obviously they make a big difference for them. I mean, it's no different when you go through. I thought certainly last year when you looked at it, I thought it was, you know, you looked at the Big Ten 14 teams. You could certainly make the case that us in Michigan probably incurred the most injuries, most games lost by players. Um so they, they, they went through that last year a little bit. And, you know, I think some guys, certainly a guy like Dawkins was able to really emerge as well as some others. And uh, now they got those two back. I think both guys are elite level players. Um, both guys can score it. Both guys can make others better. And uh, they're very, very experienced within their system and just they're really, really good basketball players. Uh, back on Kipper, uh, can he play against Missouri next year? Would that be about the time that he would be eligible? Yeah, and we're not sure yet because we're in the process of that. I would say this, Lauren, I would say that would be about the the, uh, the latest that he would be eligible to play, which is a good thing. Now, what happens between now and then with, you know, all the different things that, uh, you know, from a waiver standpoint and all that with – with his situation, you know, certainly the NCAA will make that decision ultimately, but that would be the worst case scenario. Would you appeal that he be eligible at the start of the season? Would that be an appeal that you would make? Yeah, we'll, we'll work on that. I think he has a good case, but at the end of the day, that's the NCAA's decision. Any new news on Laurent? Or no, those guys are the same, you know, just out indefinitely. Um, I do think soreness and Swelling for Laron has went down a little bit, which is good, but you know we're still, you know, still not where it needs to be yet. So he's still out indefinitely. What's the mindset of the team with the Michigan being the Big Ten opener? Are they looking at it as uh, another game, or is there a get up for this a little bit more, especially with the hard non conference schedule? Yeah, I just think it's an exciting time of year. You know, certainly I would expect that for all, for all the teams in our league to feel that way. We're in a great league with great coaches and great players. 
uh, with great exposure. I mean, this is a bi this is big time stuff. You know, as I tell them, this isn't bitty ball. You know, this is the big time. And uh, so our guys are excited. I'm sure their guys are excited. You know, obviously it's it's a little bit like we call it our second season. Uh, you know, fresh start a little bit, but I'm sure they're viewing it the same way. And you know, I certainly anticipate our guys being excited to play tomorrow at two o'clock. How have they gone about um, playing without Spike? Well, obviously, Walton has been back, as Scott mentioned. And, um, you know, they, they do a lot of, you know, Levert is, is a playmaker for them as well. You know, is he technically their point guard? You certainly can watch clips and watch offense where he looks like he is, you know. And then, obviously, Walton has that skill set himself. And then Rachman plays it a little bit also. So, and uh, Rachman was great against us, as we all know, last year in Chicago when we played him. And he's got experience. He's one of those guys, a little bit like Dawkins, I think, that maybe got extra experience, like some of our guys are doing right now at a young age because of some injuries they had last year. You know, so they've got experienced players. They've got multiple shooters, passers, dribblers. They execute their offense very, very well. Um, you know, and then defensively they mix it up, and they're good at that as well. So you know, it'll be a great challenge for us. I think Malcolm mentioned after the Mizzou game that made some unfinished business uh, against Michigan, you know, following that, that Big Ten tournament loss. I mean, how do the maybe the teams compare, you know, from that point in March to you know, kind of the new group? You know, totally right? different, obviously. I mean, we've got, uh, you know, basically Hill and Nunn and Tate, Morgan. So we got, you know, three or four guys that even played in that game last year. Finky didn't play in the game. Freshman didn't play in the game. Lewis didn't play in the game. I mean, those guys didn't play in the game. So. We're different. They're different. You already mentioned earlier, you know, Walton and Levert didn't play in that game. You know, they're playing. You know, the, they got the kid Wagner who's playing. Uh, DJ Wilson's playing. Um, it's just di it's different. You know, it's a different year. It doesn't do us any good to look in the rearview mirror. And what we need to do is look forward. And, um, you know, obviously we're, we're excited about, you know, the game tomorrow at 2 o'clock. But, you know, I, I mean, I understand Malcolm's perspective. He's an older guy. And, and um you know, he obviously has some pride, but at the end of the day, like for us right now, it's about executing our game plan and playing well tomorrow at two o'clock. You know, that other game has nothing to do with it. Questions from the phone lines? John, this is Shannon. I just uh, wanted to clarify a few things I couldn't really hear. You said. Someone has mumps, who's that? No comment. No comment. Oh, okay. Um, and Nichols, you said the worst case scenario for him joining the team is what with that? Well, uh, Lauren's question, Shannon, was, you know, yeah, that's okay. Um, you know, worst case scenario would be next, uh, I guess it would be next spring semester. So fall, a spring semester sit out here in 2016 and a fall semester 2016 sit out in hopes that spring semester, which technically, as Lauren knows and asked, which is why I asked the question, I'm assuming, you know, guy becomes eligible as soon as the fall semester is completed. So that, that was his worst case scenario. You know, if, could we get him sooner? It's certainly possible. We think he has a, a good case in a very unique and rare circumstance, but again, ultimately that'll be up to the NCAA. You've talked a lot about uh, defense this year, and obviously it seems like the teams make some significant strides in that area. What do you think was the, it has clicked, and what, what's changed for them that it's kind of come together better? Just experience. You know, uh, care, they, they have always cared. They just, uh, you know, we have a saying in pressure situations, your habits take over and their habits weren't good enough. Now their habits are getting better. You know, but they're going to be tested tomorrow at 2 o'clock. You know, offensively, you know, I was asked earlier about a comparison. I mean, we've certainly played, you know, some teams with very good offenses, not only this year but over the years. But if you ask me to name one team that I think has been challenging to defend, not only for us, but certainly for everybody, you look at their numbers, Michigan's probably the team that comes to mind. So we'll see how good these habits are tomorrow, Shannon. And to go back to this, I just, I, I'm a little confused. So the, the Michigan game, you know, 
I don't know what you can say or not saying or why, but so there's a player who's unavailable because of an illness. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. He's unavailable. He's unavailable. Uh, it's a day-to-day -day deal. Yeah. And why can't you say who that is? Because I'm choosing not to at this point. No problem. Did he attend classes at Tulane? That's obviously diving into what I'm talking about is the unique situation. Um, for a couple days. Yeah. So it's just it's unique. And uh, but again, we'll you know do all we can to try to get him eligible as quickly as possible. But the, ultimately, we don't make that decision.